Hello everybody, welcome to the video session. In this video session, we are going to discuss about LED interfacing and simple I.O. operation. In lab exercise 1, we have discussed how to make LED on and off by using a simple bitwise operations. In this lab exercise, we are going to extend further to toggle, that means to on and off, continuously using a software delay. And these are the objectives which you might have gone through during the preparation of the lab session. Here is a circuit diagram for the LED and the push button. As you can notice here, there are two LEDs are available for the user. And also in the board you can see over here, these two are the LEDs. This is one LED and this side there is one more LED. There are two LEDs are there. It's a red and green. And also we have two push buttons which you may notice here. There is two push buttons. And these are connected to a specific ports. You can see here this is connected to port 1, bit 0 and the another LED is connected to port 4, bit 7. Whereas the push buttons are connected to port 1, bit 1 and port 2, bit 2. First thing is, if you want to interface an external LED, we need to calculate the values of resistance. That means, if your microcontroller is going to output here 5 volt and you want to allow, let us say, 5 milliampere current through the circuit or through the LED, then you have to find out what is the amount of resistor or resistance has to be provided in the circuit in series with the LED. Without calculating, if you connect LED directly to the microcontrollers, it may damage the microcontroller. So we have to be very careful whenever we interface an external LED, we need to find out what is the resistance value we have to calculate. For that, first you need to understand the voltage drop across the LED also. It's based on the color of the LEDs, the, generally the voltage drop will change from 1.8 to 2.8 volt. First, we need to go through the data sheet of LED and also find out what is the voltage drop and also you should aware what is the processor voltage level. From that, you have to calculate the resistance value. You may follow this link in order to get more information on this and try to fill up these lab questions. Now, let me just show the lab one. You can see we had a header file plus there is a main program and there is a simple line which is written to toggle bit 0 of port 1. As you can see here, there is a LED which is connected in port 1 bit 0. I just downloaded the code and this is to run continuously the program, whereas this is in a single step mode. So let me run the program continuously. As you can see, the red light on the kit is just on. Whereas, if you look at the source code, what we have written, we have written for toggling the LED. Let me just pause this and run the program in a single step mode. You can see clearly the LED is getting on and off. Now, what we have to do is after making LED on, we have to provide certain amount of delay. Again, after making LED off, again we have to provide certain amount of delay. Just let me go back to the main source code and let me activate this delay functions. Now you can see there is a function is written, is named as a delay. We are passing the value here, let us say like 1000 and the value is received here 
and we have declared one more variable and we are counting from 0 up to n. n is nothing but what we get here, that means 1000. So we are counting from 0 to 1000 just to spend some amount of time. This is called as a delay. Now let us download this program and test what is the response from the LED. Now let just let me run the program in a continuous mode. You may observe that LED is just flashing, but still we couldn't get it as a complete on and off because the delay what we provided, the value what we provided is too less. We, we may need to increase maybe like 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000. That is nothing but is one of your lab question. That means So you have to find the value of n that as producing the toggling at the rate of 1 second. You don't need to find out the accurate value, you have to find out only the rough value which is giving us flash in the LED in an equal time interval which is approximately to 1 second. And then you may need to rewrite the program instead of using here a for loop. You may need to rewrite the program using a while loop, which is again your lab question. And at present, we are flashing only one LED, it's a red LED. Try to rewrite the program to flash both the LEDs, which is your lab question 5. Now, let us move on to the push button. Before going into the push button, I would like to just introduce about a concept called pin multiplexing. As you are aware, multiplexer is nothing but you are trying to carry out many functions by using a single line. Just see, is a portion of pinout detail of a MSP 430F5529 microcontroller. And you can see most of the pins has a two or three rolls. At any point of time, you may need to do or the system can do only one job. It cannot do all three jobs at the same time. For example, if you want to use this fourth one, then you can't use it maybe for this as a timer. Or if you want to have it as a timer, it can't be used as a port. So this is how they manage or they plan the complete pinout detail of a microcontroller. So the designer must take care how exactly they have to interface the peripherals. If you are planning to interface a push button here, this cannot be used for a special function. So there are some registers are provided in MSP430 microcontroller. You have to turn on or turn off those features so that this can be used only for a digital input and output or for a special function. If you read further, you may get some information such as the register which is used for special function. And also the port in which the push buttons are connected. which we already discussed in our previous section as well. Now, just look at this diagram. If user going to press this push button, this is a signal which goes to the microcontroller. When we are pushing here, which gives me the value 0. What if when I release the value? That means if, I, if the push button is released, what is the value the microcontroller is going to get? Is it 0 or 1? It comes as a question. Again, you can see here, when we press the switch 2, the microcontroller is going to get 0. When we release it, again, it's something like floating. It is not a 0, it is not a 1, which is considered as a dangerous in embedded systems. 
we need to address this one properly. Most of the microcontrollers are having a built-in pull-up or pull-down resistors, which is going to help us to address this issue. Just look at the block diagram. So this is a block diagram and assume there is a push button which is connected to the ground. So as I explained to you earlier, when we press the button, there is a zero in the pin. Assume if there is no you know, resistor over here, what happens? When you release the push button, this particular pin is under a condition called floating. It could be either zero or one. Whereas, strictly speaking, when we press the button, we need to get a zero. When we release the button, it must be one. In that case, we have to connect a resistor. We have to tie up to the VCC. The VCC pin could be a 3.3 volt or a 5 volt. When we do that, this resistor is called as a pull-up resistor. You may need to find out the registers which is used to configure the pull-up resistors in MSP430 microcontroller. This is part of your lab question. Now let me introduce how to interface the push button and how to read the value from the push button and how to control the LED using the push button. Let me choose straight away the program and I am trying to replace it in our previous lab exercise. You can see here this program is written here to configure port 0, port 1, bit 0 as a output port, which we have done on our previous experiment. And you can see here, port 2, bit 1 has been configured as an input port. And you can see, making a particular bit as a 1 is going to be output thus if you make a particular bit as a zero that is means input these two lines are used to enable the pull-up resistor and you can see here there is a main program and we are reading the input pin and we are checking with the bit one if bit one is true that means if we press the button and we are trying to make a LED on, otherwise we are trying to make a LED off. Let me just download this program. Okay, we have just downloaded the program and if I run it in a continuous mode, you may see the LED is on. If I press the button, the LED is going off. Whereas, we intended to write the program, if we press the button, you want to make the LED on, if you release the button, you want to make the LED off, which we need to just change in the if condition here, again, which is your lab question. So, you may need to try to change or you may need to tweak the uh, condition here so that you can get this particular result. And you may also go through the further lab questions and try to change to turn on the other LED and also try to change the source code to toggle the LEDs continuously upon the switch press. This is all part of your lab question which you may see over here. Thanks for watching.